Okay, good morning, Boker Tov. It's wonderful to be back and to start up our 10 minutes of meaning uh, once again. We're studying Mesilas Hasharim once a week for 10 minutes, trying to inject our lives, our day, our week with a sense of meaning, a sense of purpose to help us all realize our best selves and to accomplish all the things that we set out to do. We're on Perak Zion, the seventh chapter of Mesilas Hasharim, continuing with Bebeir Chalke Azrizis, describing the elements of alacrity. The first mida, the first character trait we studied was Zahirus. How to live a life of vigilance and caution, to not simply grip it and rip it in life, to not simply live our day, find ourselves at the end of that day, we're not even sure how we got there, but rather to be mindful, to be present, to be conscious, and to be vigilant throughout our day. The second character trait is Zerizus. Once we have identified the pitfalls, we've identified the uh, barriers, the obstacles to accomplishing what we want, we now need to chart our course. We now need to awaken ourselves and to energize ourselves, to set our goals and to pursue them relentlessly, to not be satisfied until we achieve them, until we accomplish them, to make it through each and every day, fulfilling what we promised ourselves and others we would do that day. That's the character trait of Zerizus, to not be stopped by procrastination, by laziness, by that voice of self-sabotage in our head that says, why bother? You're never going to finish. Or you're not going to get it right anyway, so don't bother trying. Or you're not worthy, or you're not capable, or you won't make others happy. That voice of self-sabotage that says, you'll do it tomorrow. What do you have to start today? Or let someone else do it. Why does it have to be you? Zrizus is the response to wake up every day and to say no. I'm going to live my best self, I'm going to fulfill all of my goals, I'm going to accomplish everything I set out to do. So the Ramchal begins this parak and he describes Zrizus, alacrity, zeal, enthusiasm, energy. They are critical at two stages. We all know one of those stages, we talk about it, we think about it, but there's a second stage and it's a critically important point that the Ramchal makes. Chalke has Zrizus Shnayim. Alacrity consists of two components of two elements. One is before you get started. You need to get out the gate. You need to be on the starting line with alacrity. If you're not excited when you begin, if you don't have energy when you set out or start, forget it, you're finished. So whether it is a project in total learning, or a new exercise regimen, or a new diet, or a new commitment to be patient and never anger, whether it is certain professional or career aspiration and goals in whatever area of life, if we're not energized to begin, forget it. So that one we all know, you need zrizus, you need alacrity to get started. The echad acharechim, the chiddush of the Ramchal, is that you need alacrity to start, but you also need alacrity to finish. A lot of people get out of the gate. How many of us have unfinished product projects in our home? We started that room, we started to build that thing, we started to paint that thing, we started the guitar lessons, we started to learn how to touch type, we started to learn how to whatever fill in the blank. We started, we had that alacrity, the zeal, the zurizus when we set out, but our life is filled and defined and characterized by unfinished projects, by unfinished promises, by unfinished goals. And so the second stage of Zriza says that Ramchal, it kicks in not only at the start, but it kicks in when you hit that wall. Because inevitably, invariably, every one of us hit a wall. You hit a wall. You know, if you first start dieting and the weight drips off and you're getting positive feedback and your clothes are, are fitting or falling off, so the reinforcement is right there. But then you hit a wall. Then you level off. Then people stop noticing. Then it's not as exciting and fun, but do you have this reasons to continue to push forward to get to that goal? When you start exercising, when you start learning, you know, when you start the dafyomi with brachos, it's exciting. And when you get to tmura, it's also exciting. It's a little <laughs> less exciting. It's a little challenging to get to the end. Baruch Hashem, the end is in sight. So that is enough to motivate. But otherwise, it'd be hard to be motivated through Erchem and Tamura and these wonderful Masechtas. It's easy to start out, but can we push through and finish? Before you begin, says the Ramchal, the key is to not turn the good deeds, the good opportunities in our lives into chametz. The whole idea of the Pesach, the Matzah, to not let it sit, 
is not just about the food. It's not simply an allergy to gluten. It's not simply a diet to go carb-free. The idea of matzah is to not be slowed down, to not be defined, to not turn our lives into chametz. More than 18 minutes to allow it to rise, to be inflated with our ego, with our laziness, with our procrastination, with the voice of self-sabotage, with the resistance in our lives that's holding us back. That's chametz. It's turning our lives into chametz. If someone in your life asks you, take out the garbage now, and you say, I'll get to it, I'll do it later, you've turned that opportunity into chametz. If someone says, you want to come learn, or let's go to shul, we'll be a few minutes early, and you say, ah, my minag is to get there late. You've turned davening into chametz. If you have an opportunity to advance your career, you have an opportunity to expand your mind, you have an opportunity to broaden your life experience, and you say, ah, I'll get to it someday, who needs it now? Then you've turned it into chametz. When presented an opportunity, jump at it. Someone says, you know, if you called so-and-so, you'd really lift their spirits. They're really down and out. So you could write it down, you could schedule it for a week from now, you could try to remember it in your head. You may get to it, you'll likely never get to it. Or you could take out your phone, dial that number, and do it right then. Don't turn a mitzvah opportunity into chametz. Grab the opportunity. Do it. Make it happen. You see, every time we procrastinate and we put time in between us and the righteous thing that we want to do, we are inviting all kinds of other variables and elements, obstacles, impediments into our way. And so we could have the most noble intentions. We could have the best plan. But if we don't do it, and we don't set a plan of how to do it, if we don't articulate goals, and we don't have a resolution about how to arrive at that goal, then it's never going to happen. It's exciting. It's invigorating. Sometimes we hear a speech, we read a book, we have a conversation, we attend a conference, we walk out of a meeting, and we are driven. This time it's going to be different. I'm going to change everything in my life. That's nice. That's a wish. You wish for everything in your life to be different. But is there a resolution? Is there a plan? Goals articulated, and how am I going to get there? And understanding and identifying, when I hit that wall, what will I do then to run through it, or to climb over it, or to get around it? Because we're all going to hit a wall, a wall. In our career, in our personal lives, in our relationships, in our learning, in our davening, we hit that proverbial wall. And if we don't have a plan, if we don't have that expectation, if we're not prepared for when we do, then it'll knock us over. It'll flatten us. And we'll never get to that promised land. We'll never get to that goal that we set out for ourselves. So Ramchal says the path to leading our best life is not just having energy when we get out of the gate, but it's having a plan to re-energize when we're halfway through, when we hit that wall, to maintain the alacrity, the enthusiasm, the energy, to be able to complete a project, to get that burst and to break through all the way until we get to the end. When we begin, it's romantic. It's like falling in love. It's amazing. But when it wears off, what will we do to continue? What will we do to make sure that we finish? Albert Einstein once said, it's a great quote, life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. Life's like riding a bicycle. It's this week's Pasha, Masay, the Masayim, Motzayim, the notion of moving. The idea of stopping and starting, but keep on moving. Because the psukim sound like even when we stop the motza'ayim, we're masa'ayim. And the answer is, even when you pause to breathe, even when you interrupt for vacation, for recreation this time of year, it's all contributing towards the masa'ayim. It's part of the movement. It's part of the journey. It's part of being able to set out and accomplish our goals. We're not abandoning the journey. We're simply re-energizing. We're be able to get a burst to be able to finish. If we stop moving, like with a bicycle, you fall down. To keep your balance, said Albert Einstein, you gotta keep moving. And that's what it means to be a Jew. The Navi Zachariah describes Malachim. Angels are omdim, they stand. Angels stand still. But man alone is called the Mahalich. We're always moving, we're doing, we're accomplishing, we're achieving. I'm not suggesting you never stop to take a break, you can't sit down. I'm not suggesting that we never need to relax or re-energize. But even when we do, it's part of the process of moving. We're always moving. We're never done moving. We're never done accomplishing and achieving. We're never done setting out new goals. 
even when we finish the minigas, your Messiah and Masechta, you finish one, that same day, in that same learning session, you already begin the next Masechta. Because we never stop, we're never omi, you're never done. We're mahalik, we're always moving. And that movement will only happen if our lives are inspired and informed by a sense of zrizus, by an energy, by an excitement. That we look at our day, and we imagine and we envision the best version of ourselves, and then we have a plan in how to accomplish it. This year's 10 Minutes of Meaning has not yet been sponsored. If you'd like to consider sponsoring the 10 Minutes of Meaning every Wednesday morning for the year, then please uh, feel free to speak to me. Whether you're here live or watching online, please be in touch. Have a fantastic day filled with energy, alacrity, and enthusiasm.